I'm the Associate Provost for Student Success, and one of my responsibilities is to help manage the application process for students, undergraduate and graduate students, who are interested in applying for the Fulbright Grant. And I am joined by Professor Bill Abbott, many of you may know him, who is a resident expert who's been doing this work for a long time, and he's going to be speaking um, more about the practical side of things. I'm going to, going to talk about the history of the program, eligibility, and then he'll be adding his experience garnered through many, many, many years <laughs> of what it takes to win this thing. And also I want to thank Teresa Fry in the back, who's been in touch with all of you, and she's going to be the main contact for you to get through to me and to get through to Professor Offit as you go through this application process. So thank you, Teresa. And also, we are joined online uh, by some folks. So I'm um, saying hello to all of you who are online. We are simultas simultas simultaneously web webinaring something or other. <laughs> so hello to you all. Um, all right. We're going to start with an overview. We don't have a lot of time, so I might fly through some of this, but before I get started, I'm going to first of all say that the Fulbright program is run by an organization called IIE, the Institute of International Education. Their website is IIE.org. And even what I tell you today, or what Professor Offit tells you today, will change tomorrow a little bit, because every day they're putting new information. This is something, because it's funded by the federal government, there's constant changes, more money coming, new programs being added. And so um, you will become very familiar with this website. This is the first year, and I don't even know if Professor Offit knows this, everything is completely online, no paper. Oh this year. boy, we're so excited. Yeah, so you're going to get very familiar with this IIE website, and as you're doing research on what you want to do, this is going to be the source for your information. Well, you see there the history of this uh, of the Fulbright program, and it was uh, it came it was named after Senator Fulbright, who was interested in fostering uh, mutual exchange between the U.S. and other countries. And as I said at the bottom, there it's um, administered by the Institute of International Education. It's created by Congress, and it's also appropriated by Congress through the budget process. So, for instance, we learned that. Um, this year, the funding is expected to remain level, but sometimes in some years there's more money than others depending on how much money we have at the federal level. Here's what the um, Fulbright program is for students who are applying. It focuses on um, U.S. university graduates or college graduates, artists, and young professionals. The, the opportunity for you is to apply to do study, to research, or to perform a teaching assistantship in another country. The grant, which a person wins after going through um, a very long process, is an award to support a study or research program that you might put together it's available in 150 countries, and the English language teaching assistantships is available in over 40 countries. And when I mentioned earlier that things are constantly changing, that number is changing as well. For instance, they just got, what country was it? A huge number, was it to Latvia? A huge number like, of teaching assistantships, like 50, just became India. available. To India? Yeah, India. So they're constantly adding more, so just need to be thinking about that. The type of person who should be applying for this is a highly motivated, open-minded individual, and those who believe that they have something to contribute and benefit from uh, an exchange, and that's really important. It's not only what you're going to get, it's also what you're going to give, and that becomes part of what you're going to be explaining in your application process. And in the running of this program, um, the uh, goal is to try and uh, have applicants coming from universities that are traditionally under underrepresented when um, you look at places 
like the Harvards and the elite institutions, they're sending lots of students. They're trying to get more universities from all over the country to, to have students who are successful in the application process. Um, they awarded uh, about 1,500 grants um, representing all facets of American society, and uh, you'll see the different types of institutions who applied small universities and large universities and the applicant pool there. Here are the criteria for eligibility. You have to be a US citizen at the time that you submit the application. There's no and or ifs or buts about that. Those with bachelor's degrees or equivalent training or professional experience by the time that you start the grant. So you'll be applying in the fall of 2010. Your grant would be starting in the fall of 2011. So many of you will be finishing your degree in the spring of 2011, and that's perfectly fine. That's, that's the way it works. You'll need to have sufficient language ability as required by the host country, and you have to be in good health. And just a note that they continue to emphasize, I don't know if this has been the case from your point of view, but when you start to read the descriptions on the different countries that you might be interested in, sometimes it says, no language required. But now they're telling us they want you to have hospitality knowledge of that language. So you'll have to show, even if you're going to a place that you've never studied the language, you're going to have to show that you can at least know how to get around. So you might have to take a language course between the time that you apply and the time you actually land in that country. And you can see who's not eligible. And we'll help you, if you're having questions about your eligibility, we'll help you negotiate that. Um, not to be, not a surprise, since all of you are high achieving students at PACE, we sent you a letter because of your GPA. You need to have strong academic and or professional preparation. You need to demonstrate, and, and Professor Offit will go into this in more detail, some leadership um, in your past, some kind of leadership experience. You cannot have spent more than six months in the country that you're thinking about applying to unless you did a study abroad, which is considered legitimate. That's not going to disqualify you. And they like to see that you've had some community involvement, besides just leadership and doing well in school, that you're also involved in your community. Because part of your application will be to stress how you will contribute to the community where you are being hosted. As I said um, before, this is the direct URL to the Fulbright program. You can also get to it through the URL I gave you before, iie.org. And you're going to find so much information there, as I said earlier, more information about eligibility. If you're thinking about studying in a certain country, you're going to need to do research about how many, um, how many grants are available, what the qualifications are, the area of study that they're interested in, if they have teaching assistantships available, what the language requirement is. And we're also going to talk, I, I know Professor Offit will do a good job of explaining to you that you also need to consider the competitive level of these countries. Some of them are very difficult to win an award for and some of them are more easy, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Easy is a relative word. <laughs> You also find what I think um, some colleagues of mine at other institutions have, have found to be very helpful is each country has a little uh, video vignette of a current or past Fulbrighter talking about the experience there and what they emphasize in their application. Um, it's a, just please make sure that you make use of what they have on this website. They also have webinars all the time and generally speaking the webinars are designed by region, so 